all you wonderful folks out there, money masters and treasure hunters. Welcome to the January 17th, terrific Thursday edition of today's opening bell on the Trader's Edge. I'm your host, Steve Rhodes, and folks, I absolutely treasure your presence here today, and my outcome is to help you to become a better money master and to provide you with the tools that each of us need to lead an inspired life. Because leading an inspired life, folks, that is what it's all about. Now, you've probably heard about the P's and Q's out there, so we're going to go take a look at one of our tools, and it's really not about the P's and Q's, it's about the P's and D's out there. And which one do you think lives a better life? You know, when you take a look at the string of D's that people often vocalize, you might hear things like debt, doubt, disease, disaster, discouragement, depression, decay, deception, danger, defeat, discord, disappointment, distrust, dejection, desolation. Those are the D's. I say get rid of those D's out there. And where you want to be spending time is in the P's because in the P's, we're taking a look at peace, prosperity, plenty, power, persistence. I love persistence. You should too. Purpose, promotion, proficiency, progress, perseverance. That's what it's all about. And finally, possibilities. I say Not the P's and Q's, it's the P's and D's, and get rid of all those D's in your life and live inside the P's. Let's go take a look at these markets here. Let's go see about the P's and the markets, the price in the market here. Right now, we've got the Dow Futures are trading up at 13,492. The ES Mini trading out at 1473. That's up eight points. The uh, Dow Futures up about 53 points right now. Says the Dow should open up about 30 points or so. NASDAQ futures up right now about 13. That's up about half a percent. Russell 2000 up uh, almost five points out at 883. King dollar, King dollar back six ticks out at 79.79. The uh, uh, gold here is down 13 bucks at 670. We're certainly going to look at the uh, gold chart. Silver off 36 pennies down a little over a percent right now out at 31.18. Uh, platinum here down eight bucks out at 16.86. Copper. Up uh, four pennies out at 365. Uh, You've got natural gas pulling back about three cents right now out at 340. Uh, Over the uh, pond, if we take a look at what's going on over in Europe right now, the DAX is up 65 points. The FTSE up 26. Uh, uh, In Asia last night, you had the Nikkei up nine points. The Hang Seng off 17. And the uh, Shanghai off 25. Our call number, as always, is 877-927-6648. Let's start off by taking a look at the uh, daily chart on the ES Mini. We can see it's up over the uh, September 14th high on the ES Mini. We're taking a look at a a price point of 1468. And really, when you take a look at the open this morning, the S&P index, the cash index, that high of 1472, that is, or 1474, I'll go back, I can't remember which number it is now, Uh, that is certainly going to be uh, tested today. And we'll see if there's any energy behind the uh, move. But you've got the uh, ES Mini up over its highs, uh, both of September 14th, as well as the high that was put in here on the 11th of November. And if you are listening to us on the radio or maybe your mobile device, you can always catch the archive of this show on Channel 9, or just simply go to the homepage of TFNN.com, and over on the right-hand side, you'll see a little button with some of the uh, smart do- smartphone devices. Click on that, and you'll see this show streaming live. You'll be able to see all of the uh, charts that we take a look at. If, in fact, we've got a real breakout, uh, coming uh, here, if we have it starting here, what we're looking at is price moving, just a A to B equals CD pattern that would take the ES Mini up into the 1488 uh, level. It needs to close above not only the September 14th, it should also close above the, uh, I would say, the high from uh, November, uh, January January the 11th out there, out at 1471.50. So 1487 looks 1488, looks like that's what it would like to uh, spike. You've also got a 1.272 expansion of swing point that would be the September 14th swing point high all the way down to the uh, low from November 16th. That would actually take the ES Mini up to the 1503 level. Let's dig down a bit further. Let's go take a look at the uh, 30-minute chart on the uh, S&P futures. Let's see what kind of pattern it is that we have going on out here. Uh, give me a moment here just to go ahead and pull that chart up. Let me get rid of a couple things that are on this uh, screen. And uh, let's go to take a look at the A to B equals CD pattern that we've got up here. Uh, the A to B equals CD pattern just on the uh, 30-minute chart, I would go ahead and use my A point, would be down at about 12 noon on January 8th. That's at the uh, 1447. 
seven level. For the uh, B point, I would say go ahead and we'll use the uh, high that came in here on uh, about six thirty in the evening at fourteen. Looks like fourteen seventy one on. Uh, January the tenth uh, out there, so that's uh, well, that wasn't actually that high. It wasn't up at fourteen seventy one. I don't know why. Well, let me let me redraw this out here. So our A point again is going to be down at the uh, low of fourteen forty seven. I'm going to just use this uh, fourteen seventy seventy five at about five in the morning on January fourteenth. That would be my uh, B point. And so if we take a look at A to B equals C D, also fourteen eighty out there. So it looks like to me that is where the E S mini wants to uh, travel to. That's going to be seven points higher than where we are at right now. Now, as we take a look at the 30-minute uh, chart, you do notice here, uh, if you're looking at the uh, bottom of the screen, you can see that uh, price has moved into that extreme area of being overbought. You know, when you get up there, that uh, it has to start working itself off. This is, uh, even if this was a breakout, this is not where you would want to uh, buy. You want to buy when that relative strength index is down towards the uh, bottom of that channel, down towards the bottom of the uh, 30 level. You want to be selling when it is up towards those highs. Of course, you want to be making sure that you're using candle signals to be able to uh uh, to be able to uh, make your uh, trading decisions, but you do not need to chase it. You need to understand the breathing patterns on the intraday charts here just to get a better feel for what is going on out there. So that is on the ES Mini. If we go take a look at... Uh Let's go take a look at the uh, Dow out here, and we'll take a look at the uh, actual daily uh, Dow futures contract. Give me a moment here to just go ahead and pull that up. Uh, that is uh, traveling, where we got that, 13,489. So let's go see what that is actually doing. So the Dow futures here struggling as, they, as it gets into its swing point high, which is October 5th. Now, the low of that is 13,489. The high of that is 13,599. If you're watching on Tiger TV, kind of an interesting uh, setup of, uh, of uh, uh, overhead resistance that you've got the uh, Dow traveling into. If we go back to the uh, trend line, this is the trend line, folks, that takes you back to the lows of October uh, 4th, 2011 inside the uh, Dow futures. That was down at the price of 10328 If you just use that as one of your touch points, and what you do is you use the uh, uh, touch point of June 4th, and we're just drawing a trend line, we're not drawing a channel, uh, we certainly can see that Dow futures broke through that with conviction with a wide-ranging bar on the day of November 7th. And, of course, it was also, looks like it was probably making a, a .618 retracement. Let's uh, take a look at that. Now, almost a .786 retracement off of that uh, June 4th level up to the high that was put in here uh, in uh, October 5th of 2012. Uh, needless to say, broke through it, came back up, tried to get back inside that, that trend line on December the 11th, rejected that area, moved back down into the December 31st time frame, and you can see here the Dow running into two areas of resistance. Uh, the first one being the horizontal resistance, which has uh, more strength, quite frankly, than the diagonal uh, trend line. So, but you can see how price is running right into uh, that area, even this morning as it popped up. We'll see how this here plays out. It's possible that what we'll see is the Dow actually try to get up and over the October 5th uh, level. Of course, if the Dow does that, I suspect that we'll see the ES Mini go ahead and complete its A to B equals CD pattern. Uh, the price that we gave out uh, earlier. If we take a look at the 30-minute uh, chart here of the uh, Dow futures, let's uh, pull back down and take a look at uh, that. Uh, we can see here breaking, uh, certainly if, if the Dow futures are going to uh, continue to move higher, they may pull back and test the uh, swing point from about 4 in the evening on January 15th. That's a level of 13465 The 30-minute chart here also shows price moving into that uh, overbought uh, condition using the uh, rental strength indicator out here. So it's an area where this has to be uh, worked off. I suspect we'll see it being worked off between the uh, 10 o'clock, 10 30 uh, hour out here after the uh, cash market uh, opens up. If we go take a quick peek at uh, what's going on around the uh, world. Let's go start off and take a look at the uh, Hang Seng. If you take a look at the Hang Seng, A to B equals CD. It's trying to complete that pattern, and that is starting off with uh, down here at the lows in October, October 5th, uh, October 5th, October 4th, 2011, when it was traveling down to a low of about the 16,170. Of course, you can see, uh, and this is the daily chart we're looking at. 
uh, being in the over uh, over uh, uh, sold condition. That starts your A point. The uh, Hang Seng moves up into the March 2012 time frame, right around the 21,641. Makes a, a retracement. If we take a look at that retracement, uh, uh, makes a point six one eight retracement almost perfectly when it comes down into the 18,250-ish range. A to B equals C D says 23,615. What the uh, Hang Seng has gotten up to so far a high of 23,381. So in essence, that pattern just about complete as it was also moving up into the uh, overbought er uh, territory. If we go take a look at the uh, Nikkei, uh, yesterday we were taking a look at the Nikkei, taking a look at the island reversal, island reversal top formation uh, out there. We can see here in uh, overnight action, the Nikkei continued to push lower. The bulls came back in and pushed the uh, market up. The Nikkei actually got down to a uh, low of 10,432 out there, that island reversal, as it was coming into a 1.272 butterfly pattern out there, uh, says that the Nikkei ought to pull back to at least 99.15. That would be the 0.382 retracement of the entire move up, more likely 92.75. Uh, if you take a look at the uh, chart here on Tiger TV, uh, what you also see is the uh, Japanese, the Nikkei, uh, which had traveled for quite some time in that overbought territory, moving back down below that line, working that off. The last time that the Nikkei uh, had the same pattern out here was back in the uh, March 2012 time frame uh, when it went ahead and uh, made its retracement down. So I suspect we will see the Nikkei continue to move its way down, do a retracement, try to get back inside the lower part of its range, which is going to be getting below 10,255 out there. 877-927-6648. Gold trade down twelve dollars, silver off forty cents. We'll be right back. What type of investor are you? Conservative, moderate, or aggressive? No matter your investor personality, your overall portfolio should reflect your financial goals, time horizon, and your risk tolerance. Help ensure your portfolio is appropriately invested with an asset allocation plan from Morgan Stanley Wealth Management. Simply picking the right stocks is not enough. Research has shown that choosing the right proportions of stocks, bonds, and cash is essential to the success of your long-term investments. Morgan Stanley believes a carefully selected portfolio can lower volatility and increase investment return potential. Find out about what an asset allocation and a Morgan Stanley Wealth Management financial advisor can do for you. Call Angela O'Brien, first vice president and financial planner of the Clearwater, Florida branch at 727-441-6108 today to discuss your personal financial needs. Asset allocation does not assure a profit or protect against loss in declining financial markets. Investments and services are offered through Morgan Stanley Wealth Management, LLC. Member SIPC. With the launch of Tiger TV, TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Ken Shreve, David White, Larry Pesavento, Victor Jones, or Daryl Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. TFNN is proud to partner with Great Panther Silver for another exciting silver coin giveaway. The Great Panther Silver Super Silver Giveaway begins the week of January 28th and will be choosing 47 lucky winners. It's free to enter with absolutely no strings attached. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com today to fill out your entry form. Every hour that we're on the air, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. the week of January 28th, we'll be randomly choosing one lucky winner that will win a silver coin or bar from Great Panther Silver and TFNN. And the final hour of the week, Friday, February 1st, we'll choose three lucky winners. That's 47 winners in just one week with over $1,000 in silver given away to our loyal listeners. Register today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. And for more information on Great Panther Silver, you can click on their banner on the front page of TFNN.com or check them out on the NYSE Amex symbol GPL or on the Toronto Stock Exchange symbol GPR. 
Are you looking for a precision edge in the market? Something that can stack the odds in your favor? Then look into Larry Pesavento's new trading newsletter, Patterns, Profits, and Peace of Mind. In each weekly issue, Larry explains what's going to happen in the markets based on the pattern he sees developing and gives you actionable trade ideas based on those patterns. Plus, you'll get his detailed analysis on a variety of markets and sectors, including stocks, treasury bonds, the gold market, oil, the dollar, the forex market, and more. And you'll get the technical corner segment, which is a short but powerful weekly training session on trading. You'll get access to all the patterns Larry is seeing in the markets, plus the Astro Harmonics and powerful Bradley stock market model that Larry utilizes for less than $5 a day. An extremely potent combination that will give you just the edge you've been looking for. Try patterns, profits, and peace of mind absolutely free for two weeks. Go to TFNN.com and click on the free trial link at the top of the page. That's an $85 value, yours free when you register right now. Get Larry's patterns, profits, and peace of mind and get the edge you've been looking for. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Backtech Environmental. For more information, just click the Backtech banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, jobless claims uh, coming in today at 335,000. That was down 47,000. That's what uh, jump-started the uh, market here this morning. Uh, you had building net permits were up uh, 3%. Housing starts up at uh, 12%. And, folks, if you haven't had a chance to uh, download the white paper on the homepage at TFNN.com, do yourself a favor. Go over to the homepage. You'll see under breaking news, you'll see the white paper that uh, Tom did. And if you've got further interest in, uh, in going ahead and maybe diversifying your uh, portfolio, Portfolio, your retirement assets, maybe buying buying at lows, which would be in the real estate market and selling at the highs, and your qualified investor, uh, just uh, go to the homepage of TFNN.com. Over on the right-hand side, you will see the Tiger Real Estate Opportunity Fund uh, button, and just uh, follow along. Now, with the markets potentially breaking out here, there is such divergence all over the place. I can show you chart after chart after chart that says that there's a significant drop that is uh, forthcoming. When? That's the question. Mark. So we've got to look at uh, candle signals. We have to look at patterns that are completing out there. You know, one of the charts that I take a look at is the uh, GE chart. And I believe GE is out with their earnings uh, tomorrow. I don't recall if that is before or after the bell just yet, but it is tomorrow, so we'll be taking a look at that. If you're watching us on Tiger TV, you're taking a look at a, a chart. It's got three windows in it. The top uh, portion of that chart is the actual chart of uh, General Electric. Now, you don't usually see me using line charts, but uh, here is a, a great way to be able to show divergence where you're taking a look at price moving in one direction and uh, or, or in several directions. In this case here at the uh, top portion, GE which again, I believe it's number 28 uh, or uh, 28 uh, as far as the weighting structure inside the uh, Dow. So it's not going to move the Dow uh, up or down much. But what it is, it's a great bellwether as far as a uh, leader with regard to the uh, to a forthcoming correction. And if you take a look at this, when you take a look at the divergence right now, you've got the uh, Dow pointing down uh, off of its uh, swing point, going back to uh, December 18th, where we've had the actual Dow itself, GE moving down, and we've had the uh, Dow moving up. And if you take a look at this chart here, you can see has always been a uh, indication of a uh, correction, sometimes very large corrections out there. So, uh, you know, and, and it's not just this chart. It's uh, taking a look at uh, the McClellan oscillators inside the strongest uh, index out there, new, the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, it's the uh, Euro-Yen uh, chart, all, of course, in the uh, currency market right now. And we can go ahead and switch over to that. We do have the uh, currencies are popping. Uh, let's see, the first currency chart that pops up on my screen is the uh, U.S. dollar Japanese yen. Uh, that had made a, a 1.618 butterfly pattern oh, back in the 10th uh, uh, or so of uh, January out there. Uh, that's what you're looking at on the uh, screen here. And that area has pretty much held uh, what the uh, U.S. dollar Japanese yen has done so far this morning. It's made a 1 to 1.272, A to B equals C D up. It's coming right into the – and it's made a 100% move of a move, coming back either to the swing point cluster highs back in the uh, January 
January 13th level, as well as where we saw a downdraft begin, which was at 10 o'clock in the evening on January 14th. Now, not that you did have some bearish candles, a little cluster on the 30-minute sessions here between about, uh, I would say, the 7 to uh, 8 o'clock time frame. Uh, those things have been erased here uh, after the uh, jobs, uh, jobless uh, claims came out, the building permits came out, uh, but still you've got the uh, U.S. dollar, Japanese yen, just hanging out at this 1 to 1.272, A to B equals CD. Let's go to our first call. Let's go to uh, Rick in British Columbia. Rick, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. Hey, how are you doing? Good. Yourself today? Oh, not too bad, but uh, I, I was, uh, I got a bit, of a, a bit of an echo when I'm talking to you, but maybe you don't hear it, just me. I don't know. I, I don't hear it, so you're good. Okay. Anyway, with the gun control thing, uh, just to change it, uh, I was thinking of coming to Tampa now and, you know, without my slingshot, but now everybody wants to seem to keep their gun, so I'm going to take my slingshot along just in case. Uh, okay. Are you good with that slingshot? <laughs> <laughs> I used to be. When I was a kid, we used to try to shoot squirrels and grouse up in the grouse, which is a, you know, a little No, what would you use? What would you use? Uh, ball bearings? Uh... Uh, actually, marbles. Marbles. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's great. It's hey, one, of, wanna, one of those big ones that uh, just uh, sits on your forearm and it's got that big band that you pull back? That's right, yeah. Uh, hey, I want to just talk to you about um, the Bradley model. Yes. I see, it, I see a turn on the 21st, which is Monday. Right. Which could correlate with this move up today. Um, and then bottoming on the 29th. I, would, I'm gonna, I was just curious what your thoughts are on that. Well, you know, the Bradley model, is, you know, I, I see it. In fact, I've got it up on my uh, screen here right now. Let me just uh, check here real quick, make sure that I don't have this thing inverted real quickly. Uh, where is it? Uh, I might have to, I'm going to have to do that during the Hey, Rick, can you hold on? Oh, yeah. Okay, because we're going to the break. When we come back, we're going to go see how these markets are going to pop. And we'll go back to uh, Rick from British Columbia. We'll take a look at the Bradley model. You two can get in on the action. Just give us a call at 877 927 Four, eight. We'd love to hear from you right now as the uh, market's open here. We've got the uh, futures are up, pointed up, and the market will pop. We'll see if it's going to drop. We'll be right back. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Just recently, on December 28th, Market Insight subscribers were advised to go along the QQQ, the NASDAQ 100 ETF, on December 28th at 63.91. And only two trading days later, after a huge jump in the markets, Market Insight subscribers were advised to sell the QQQ at 66.64 for a $2.73 or 4.27% profit to start off 2013. At the same time, Tom O'Brien had advised his clients looking for a more leveraged trade that they could could have initiated a position in the QLD, the ProShares Ultra QQQ ETF, and over the same two trading days, Market Insights subscribers were able to lock in a $4.48 profit or an 8.47% gain in just one trade. Get your two-week free trial to Market Insights today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during your free trial and pay nothing. Don't miss out on the next great trading opportunity in 2013. Act today. If you're an investor looking for a great weekly investment newsletter, then now is the perfect time to try out Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks. 
Every Tuesday, Ken breaks down multiple sectors in his weekly newsletter, Ultimate Growth Stocks, with a full in-depth report including specific trading recommendations within his model portfolio, charts, sector analysis, upcoming economic data, along with intraweek trading updates on newsletter positions whenever the market dictates. Right now, you can receive a full month, that's 30 days, to evaluate Ken's newsletter free of charge to see if it fits your trading plan. At less than $75 per month, Ken provides you with his expert trading advice that can pay for itself in no time. Take advantage of this great offer by signing up for a 30-day free trial to Ken Shreve's Ultimate Growth Stocks today. Don't let this offer pass you by. Visit the front page of TFNN.com and sign up now. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we're off to the races. We've got the Dow up 37 points right now. Composite up 14, S&P's up 5, small caps up 3, Google up a buck 53, Apple up a buck 90, Microsoft up 7 ticks, Intel up 14, Cisco down 11. Leading the charge to the upside here is uh, CBS Corp. Uh, CBS up $3.65. Uh, Asmil, ASML Holdings up about 3 bucks. Amazon up 3, Newskin, NUS up 260. Uh, to the downside, you've got Williams and Sonoma off about two bucks. Uh, PVA, PVH Corp off two seventy. Herbalife uh, down a buck seventy six. Qlik Technologies QLIK uh, down about ninety five uh, cents, maybe about a buck right now. Citigroup off a dollar as well. And we're going to go back to uh, British Columbia to our man Rick, who was uh, pointing out the uh, Bradley uh, model has a turn date. The turn date on the Bradley is uh, is on Monday. Uh, is that is that what you're showing, Rick? You know, I don't seem to get as much information this year, but okay. it's called the uh, Bradley Cider, S-I-D-E-R. Yeah, um, okay, okay. And um, they got us rallying into the 20th, which is okay. the weekend, right? Yep, yep, yep. And the markets so that, are closed on Monday, folks. That so, could uh, be either. That, oh, is that right? Yep, yep. Uh, we got a holiday here in the U.S. at least. I should say the U.S. markets are closed on Monday. And, you know, folks, uh, for those of you not familiar with uh, what Rick is talking about, the uh, Bradley model, back in, in 1946, I believe it was, Donald Bradley published, published a book called uh, Stock Market uh, Prediction. In fact, uh, some of you may be able to just find it on the uh, Internet. It's a, a great book, and the, the science behind the book was the premise that planetary pairs such as uh, Venus and Uranus had either a positive or negative uh, bias in the uh, market. And what he did was he assigned points to those uh, biases and was able to produce a, a graph and a prediction tool uh, for what the stock market would do years in advance out there. And I think the book sold, Rick, I think it sold for like four bucks uh, back in 46. I don't know what that might equate to in Canadian dollars today or U.S. dollars today, but uh, four bucks out there. And, uh, and you're able to go ahead and plot that on, the, uh, on, on charts. Now, one of the things that I have uh, on the chart that if you're watching on Tiger TV, folks, uh, I have 
all of the uh, Venus uh, Uranus uh, aspects. Uh, there's also, if you're looking at the black line on the bottom of the chart, that is also the uh, Bradley model. And if I if I move the chart off to the left hand side, you'll see that the Bradley here. It's a predictive uh, tool, and by a predictive tool, you know it's it's really I kind of use it, Rick, more as a. Uh, it's, I think it's best used as a guideline for trend analysis. Not well, so much not so much an actual you know turn uh, turn. Uh, but but if you do take a look at the actual you know the premise of his book, which was uh, Venus and Uranus, and you go ahead and you plot those uh, on your uh, charts in 2012. The single best identifier of a market turn happened to be uh, Venus uh, Uranus. And we had uh, one of the most recent aspects came in here on January 13th. Uh, the high right now is being taken out, but we've got a lot of time left in the uh, trading session. So be curious, to, and it worked like 100% of the time. So be curious to see if it uh, continues on here in uh, 2013. But it's a, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a great tool out there, in my opinion. Well, the thing is, it's a good tool to use and uh, correlate it with, um, you know, whether you use volumes with ABC structures up, whether you use trend lines, 200 Absolutely. supports. Uh, you, that's just another tool, and, um, you know, I've been following it. and it, Sometimes it's inverted, right? I mean, you see, it shows a picture of it going down, but I can go the other way, too. Yeah, exactly. That's why when, when you when you asked about it, I had to go back into my chart to see if I had actually inverted it or not. Uh, and uh, and I had not so this this if I if I pull this back here right now you know assuming that it has not inverted you know we, there's also something called the January effect which which um, you know most folks are aware of and that January effect says that there should be a pullback that should be starting about now as well now uh, if we get if you know if the Bradley model you know the Bradley model really st should have started moving down back in the early part of uh, January and uh, but it does show here if it's not inverted you know it does show the market moving up into the uh, you know end of May early part of a uh, June time frame yeah okay well thanks for your time and whenever you got a chance if you can go over MOS in the next hour and a half or hour oh, absolutely that you have, yeah, yeah be, I'll be happy to go take a look at uh, mosaic and potash and others and uh, thanks for calling Rick appreciate it thank you you bet. Have a great day. And, uh, uh, folks, uh, let's go take a look at uh, some of these stocks here that are popping and uh, dropping. So let's go take a look at, of course, you know where we're going to go first. We're going to go take a look at uh, Apple. As we take a look at Apple, had a, a nice day uh, yesterday, had a very bullish uh, candle. Uh, yesterday, that's referred to as a, a bull sash candle out there. It's actually stronger than a, a bullish in uh, golfing. And so we'll see how this plays out today. Now, what the Apple was trying to do yesterday, and uh, you know that these uh, gaps, these windows are very strong strong pieces of information for us. And if we take a look at Apple, what it was doing as it made that strong bullish candle formation yesterday, what it stopped at was that gap down. That gap down that we're talking about is the January 14th level, where Apple has most recently gapped down, did it with 26 million shares, went on to make a lower low with uh, more volume, 31 million shares out there. But you can see as Apple got into that gap yesterday, actually got up to a high of 509.44. This is where the bulls and bears right now are going to be having their uh, fight, their struggle. And those gaps are very, very important. Do gaps get filled on the way up and on the way down? They most certainly do. So you've got open gaps up here, uh, you know, in uh, Apple, or well, you've got this open gap up here. Looks like that. Uh, there's there's also an open gap in Apple right at the uh, 572 uh, level. You've also got it at the swing point from December 3rd out there. But let's deal with one thing at a time. Right now, the war is on at the price point of the 50750. Was tested yesterday, held as a, a resistance line. Uh, tried to uh, pop up above that uh, here this morning, back below that area. So if you're watching Apple, if you're using Apple as a, a bellwether, as an indicator as to what's going on inside the market, uh, market, uh, what you're taking a look at is that uh, area there of 507.50. Let's go to uh, Lou in uh, Nashua. Lou, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? All right. How you wanted you? to look at okay. the... S -S -Q -Q. At okay, at the SQQQ. So if we go take a look at the, which is the uh, short for the NDX, and are you in it, looking to get in it? I'm in it, and I'm just wondering if I should bail or not. Okay, so let's go take a look at the, let's actually go take a look at the uh, Qs here. And uh, the, the SQQQ, folks, is the 300% correlation. We're going to go take a look at the uh, one-to-one, -one, and I think that's the place where you're going to get your best information. 
So if we take a look at the uh, cues themselves, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and erase. Uh, are you watching on Tiger TV, Lou? No, not now. You're not. Okay. The area that, that, that you should be focused on is really what the Qs have done so far this morning is uh, they've gotten up into the October 19th downdraft. Now, that has got 75 million shares, and the high of that is 67.27. And every time that the uh, Qs have gotten up there, they tried to take on that area on January 3rd with 47 million shares, got rejected, tried to take it on with 37 million shares on January 10th. Today, they're also trying to take it on. Got up to a high so far of 6726 uh, and the number you're looking at is 6727 what the queues have been doing have re has really been traveling in this little sideways uh, consolidation range so you're up towards the top of it the answer to your question is no you shouldn't bail on it just yet uh, because it's up towards the top of its uh, range. It's up towards the top of that downdraft bar of 67.27. If you were looking to go short, here's the spot where you would actually do it. Now, the problem is what you need to see is you need to see the queues close below the 66.48 level. That's the bottom of the gap up from January 2nd, and that area has held as very strong support. So you can see the queues have got strong resistance and strong support in a very narrow banded trading range from the uh, 67. Uh, what is it, the 67.27 level all the way down to the uh, 66.48. Uh, so now, in my opinion, is not the time to bail. Here's where, because you were, you were inclined to take a short position, and uh, here's where you would actually be putting on a short uh, versus, uh, versus trying to go ahead and sell. Gotcha. But what you don't want to see is you don't want to see this close above 67.27. If it closes above 67.27, says to me that what the Qs will do is travel up to 68.75, where it'll make a 0.786 Gartley sell pattern. It has really great uh, Fibonacci geometry uh, up there and would take it back into the October 5th uh, swing point. But uh, So those are the parameters that I would be looking at if I were trading the SQQQ, okay? Okay, okay. Do you have time to look at uh, a quick look at uh, COF? COF, absolutely. So let's go take a look at uh, COF. Uh, give me a second here to pull that up. And uh, COF is uh, what? What's uh, what's uh, what's that? Uh, That's uh, uh, Capital uh, Capital One. Capital One, okay. Capital One, who sponsors the Capital One Bulls down in Orlando, Florida. So you've got Capital One. Are you in this? Looking to get in? Tell me what, no, uh, how I can help you here. Looking, looking to get in. Probably looking to get fall. in. Okay, so we got Capital One. It's trading at uh, 6188. Uh, uh, like like all the equities out there, you know, January second had a, a gap up and did it with pretty decent volume. Uh, did it, uh, Lou, with 6.6 .6 million uh, shares. Uh, you do have, uh, let's see here, a little bit of volume off of the top, 5 million shares off the top on January 14th, and yesterday's bounce was with about 4 million shares. Uh, five, oh, we might have lost uh, Lou. Lou, you there? Yeah, I'm there. I'm okay, great. Okay, great. Uh, and so uh, what I would do, as far as a buy point on this, if you're looking to I would say that what you want to do is you want to take a look at this as it comes back into the January 2nd low, which is 59.30. That's where you've got that open window. And if it can hold that level, which means get some, you know, a penny below that at 59.29, close back above it on uh, less than 6.6 .6 million shares, that would set up a uh, buying opportunity for you. Okay. Got All righty. Got it. Thank you. You bet. Thanks for calling. Have yourself a, a great uh, Thursday. Uh, let's go take a look at uh, some of these stocks here that are popping and dropping. Let's start with uh, BlackRock. BlackRock up uh, $5.59 right now. So let's go see what uh, that is uh, going into. The ticker symbol there is BLK. So as we take a look at uh, BlackRock, and one of the things that we're going to do today, whether it's during the uh, Money Masters uh, show or uh, this uh, show here, is I want to go back and take a look at, because I've had a couple of questions, a couple of emails, that have sent in, and thanks to everybody that does send uh, emails off to me. I do uh, do my best to get back within uh, 24 hours, and uh, and I wanted to take a look at the uh, A to B equals C D pattern in the Russell 2000 in the futures contracts. And the reason why I want you to, and I start off the mornings, we start off taking a look at the uh, futures contract, obviously before the markets uh, opened. And I want to show you the difference from a trading standpoint. If you're a trader, uh, uh, you know intraday trader especially, I want to show you how the pattern shows up on the uh, Russell 2000 didn't show up in the Russell. 
Global 2000 Index. So shows up in the futures market, didn't show up in the index, doesn't show up in the IWM. So that that way, and you don't have to trade the futures, but when you are taking a look at getting into or where there's going to be market turns, you're looking for patterns that are completely out there, whether it's a lightning bolt pattern, whether it's a test of swing points on uh, volume, with volume, lighter volume, and it's in the uh, futures market where you're going to see those patterns that just simply show up right in front of you. And it's going to help your trading so much. So we'll, we'll take a look at that. But right now we're taking a look at BlackRock, which has uh, gapped up here. Uh, volume in the equity so far today, 209,000 shares. If we just take a look at uh, expansions of swing points here on BlackRock, you'd go back to the April 3rd high, 207.27, down to the uh, low that was put in on uh, May 25th, 2012. 222.80 was the 1.272 level. You can see that that's where BlackRock hung out over the last couple of trading sessions. It's gapped up today. That is a, a strong sign out there. This has a gap as well back on January uh, 2nd. If we take a look at the uh, next uh, target level, potential target level on this would be the uh, 239 area. But BlackRock, what BlackRock is also setting up for here with this uh, with this move. Now, in, in this case here, and here's what you want to come back and take a look at on this chart. You've got a gap up today. If BlackRock were to close right here, let's say it closes right where it opened, the price that it opened at was 228.75. It's trading at 228.34 right now. A gap up with a, a doji out there, it's a dangerous thing. That's not what you want to see. When you see a gap up, you want to see an equity move towards the uh, top of its uh, trading session. So, for example, today, if we were to trade lower, uh, you know, and still keep that gap, that's a bad uh, sign out there. But BlackRock is one of these equities here where it's completed an expansion pattern, volume-wise here, not, not exactly showing a, a ton of volume behind the uh, move out here, even if I uh, get rid of that uh, big spike up uh, back on the uh, May 23rd time frame out here. So this is one that you want to go ahead and note on your charts and continue to come back to it to see if by any chance it creates a island reversal. And, and the reason is because that is as bearish a pattern as you possibly can get. And you want to take a look at uh, shorting. If you're looking at shorting stocks, you want to take a look at stocks that are a couple hundred dollars. Those are your best stocks to short. You don't want to be choosing a stock that is $20 or $10 or $15. And the reason that you don't is take a look at what your downside potential is on a $20 stock or a $25 or $30 stock. You know, and they have to completely go out of business for you to make, uh, you know, that much bread on it. On the case of a, a stock like a BlackRock, if it were to give you a bearish signal out here and it's at $228, you know, you're going to make your, you're going to make uh, your opportunity to make uh, more money is, is just simply substantial. You got to use the right money management strategy. Always use the right money management strategy, understand your true range, make sure you understand position sizing. If you're not familiar with those terms, then go to the homepage of TFNN.com and over on the left-hand side, you'll see a little arrow up and down and uh, move it down to position sizing. I've got a 30-minute video. It explains everything, allows you to use the uh, tool out there, the position size calculator. Right now, we've got the Dow up 33, a composite up 10, S&P up 3, and it will be right back, folks. You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing, but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risk charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term long-term prospects.
David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Recently, Basil Chapman has had some outstanding trades in his newsletter, The Opening Call. Each morning by 9 a.m., Basil uploads his newsletter to the TFNN servers so that his subscribers can access his expert trading advice. Basil gives his take on the direction of key indices and updates any active trades that his subscribers are currently in. Just recently, Basil's subscribers closed out a short position in Chipotle Mexican Grill, CMG, for more than an $86 profit per share, over a 20% gain in just one position. If you'd like to try out Basil Chapman's newsletter, The Opening Call, then visit the front page at TFNN.com and click Trading Newsletters. There you'll find Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, where you can request a free sample copy. Also, don't miss Basil's program, The Tiger Technician's Hour, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. Eastern, on TFNN. Tom O'Brien's weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, has helped subscribers for over 10 years navigate the high-risk world of exploring and producing gold companies. And now's a great time to sign up for a free month-long trial to see the kind of insight that Tom delivers for his subscribers on a weekly basis. Every Monday, Tom O'Brien issues a quick update on the metal market, giving you his take on the HUI, XAU, GLD, dollar bonds, and much more. Tom follows Monday's update with a full gold report which is delivered to subscribers Tuesday afternoon with detailed coverage of 24 separate gold or metal stocks as well as another 10 to 15 stocks that he lets you know are on his potential watch list. Get your month-long free trial to the gold report today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Don't spend another year navigating the metal markets on your own. Act early in 2013 and make the most of your gold and metal market investments. Catch the Money Masters as they teach you the art of mastering money when it comes to trading and investing. Next on TFNN. The Dow right now up 36 points. S and P's up four. Composite up 11. And the number, the number you want to have written down on your pad of paper, is going to be the swing point high in the S and P from September 14th. That number 1474.51. You've got the S and P trading right now at 1476.50. You get a close back below 1474.51 on lighter volume. You will have had a rejection of a key swing point uh, right there. And uh, you know, ideally, what you would look for is not just a uh, as a rejection of price. You'd be looking for a uh, bearish uh, candle uh, pattern out there. So you'd like to have it all. Uh, that would be pretty easy, quite frankly, to do today. Uh, the uh, S&P here uh, opened up. The S&P Cash Index opened at 1472.63. That is above all of these uh, small-bodied uh, candles here uh, beginning on January 11th. And if you were to uh, get a close below, we'll use here the 1472 number, uh, you would uh, have a rejection of a swing point high. You would have a bearish engulfing candle that would take back the last four trading sessions, and that would give you a, a better indication of, and this here's where your back is up against the wall. So if you were uh, looking to take a, a short position in the markets, it's where you've got the best uh, reward to uh, risk uh, playing, uh, playing it out. Uh, and all you have to do is just simply be patient. You have to simply be patient and you don't necessarily need to uh, catch the uh, top tick, nor do you have to catch the bottom uh, tick out there, and you're looking for uh, reversal signals. Uh, if you do get if the S&P does close above September 14th, then it can continue to gravitate higher. 1474.51, that is the number. As far as where could it move to, well, you could take a look at a number of different ways to analyze it. Uh, one would just simply be to take a look at an expansion of uh, swing points. Now, if you're watching on Tiger TV, what you also uh, see out here is uh, you're taking a look at the uh, uh, rising price channel. Those are the 
two blue uh, diagonal lines that you see on my uh, screen. Uh, when you're creating channels versus trends, you know some of you might ask, how come, Steve, you're not using the lower portion of the uh, of the candle? It's because when you're creating a price channel, you want to use co-located opens and closes. So it doesn't matter whether you're using an open of a candle or a close of a uh, candle. In this case here, and you want to try to get three. You want to get as many as you possibly can. So I'm using the uh, body of the uh, session of November 16th, the open there at the 1353 level, and basically the uh, close of December 28th and the open of December 31st. Net marks are a uh, bottom. Along the uh, top here, you've got the uh, uh, close of January 4th, the close of January 2nd, the uh, close of December 18th out there. Uh, that sets up our uh, three along the uh, top. The 1.618 expansion off of the uh, swing points here from December 18th down to the low put in on December 31st, 14, let me see if I can, 1478.83. Interestingly enough, the high so far today in the S&P, uh, 1478.18. So uh, good enough for uh, my uh, work out there. However, the uh, reversal or potential reversal would be a close back below the 1474.51 uh, uh, level. And when we do uh, go into the uh, Money Master show, we'll go take a look at the uh, Russell 2000. We'll take a look at the uh, patterns that were out there on the 30-minute chart and the futures contracts and why you want to be paying attention to the futures contract. Maybe you don't have that data or you don't have that on your system, one way to get it, you know, would be to go over to the homepage of TFNN.com and sign up for the Nadex platform. Uh, I believe that they've got the uh, data feed out there, and if you put a $100 deposit down, you can learn to trade Nadex as well as uh, get access to the uh, charting system uh, that they've uh, got out there. So consider that as well as if you're in the Denver area, you want to sign up for the uh, uh, Nadex uh, uh, web workshop that uh, both Tom and Daryl Martin will be doing. All the details on the homepage page at tfnn.com. Thanks so much for being here, folks. If you're off to start your day, have a, a great day, a, a terrific Thursday. I'll look forward to seeing you in the morning. If not, we'll see you in a few, and uh, just have a great day. Take care, folks. Let me tell you something, folks. Yes. I have people coming up to me saying, I just can't believe the amount of work that Steve does on his newsletter. Yeah. And I says, I absolutely agree. That is a recent clip from the Money Masters show that Tom and I do each day at TFNN. My newsletter service, Mastering Probability, is much, much more than a newsletter. Yes, it's outperformed the S&P 500 by 100% during the last 15 months. But more importantly, it's an extraordinary education, a roadmap for your success and it's yours risk-free for the next 30 days. Just go to the homepage of TFNN.com and click on my name, Steve Rhodes, and then Mastering Probability, because everyone needs a success strategy. For most, it's a competitive edge, the will to win, the drive to overcome any obstacle. Whatever you call it, winners find a way. Find your way to Mastering Probability today, because your journey to extraordinary rewards is just one click away.